August 5th, 2018, a 35-year-old man by the name of Ryan Lamb placed a call to 911 regarding the discovery of his then-boyfriend, 31-year-old Ryan Nixon. He was frantic and claimed to have discovered him with poke holes all over his body. The police quickly arrive on the scene and find the couple's apartment a complete mess, as if a fight may have taken place. They find blood in almost every room of the apartment. And then they find Ryan Nixon, deceased, in a seated position in the bathtub with the shower still running. Investigators immediately look to speak to Ryan Lamb, but Ryan is acting frantic and difficult to communicate with. I need my man. Okay, come here. Yes. Walk with me. Oh my God. No, baby. Oh my gosh, please. Right, right. Oh, please, please. Okay. It just came home. They then bring him in for an interrogation, but first they wait for him to regain his composure. No. Generally, when a person goes missing or is found murdered, the initial and first person that investigators will try to rule out is the spouse. And this situation is no different. And the investigators quickly find themselves dissecting Ryan's claims. So Ryan, I know that you've told the other officers kind of what took place. I'm sorry, I wasn't there for that. Can you tell me from start to finish? I just recall like coming in. Blood all over the student, and I thought he must have cracked his nose or something. And I go in, and he was laying right on uh, the kitchen. There's a, a wall that separates the kitchen from the living room. He was laying up against that, and he had scissors in his belly, and he was bleeding really heavily from the back of his head. How did his head get cut? I don't know. There was blood on the back of his head. Why do you mean it from the wall? And then he just called for help. And like, I think he said it was fine. It was fine. Brian said it was fine. He said he was totally like conscious and like talking to me and said it was fine. One of the first things they wanted to bring attention to was the relatively fresh-looking injuries on Ryan's chest. These injuries looked eerily similar to ones that could be caused by a four-pronged fork. And after about 45 minutes, investigators ask Ryan how he got them. Well, you got an inside of your shirt there. It looks like you got oh, from other night. And this is what he claimed. What's that from? It looks like a fork. Yeah. What's it from? Well, this one. Okay. So they like to like put belts around each other's necks. The lies that completely restrain. That's what burns you. And investigators still feel unsure about Ryan's involvement. So they ask him for his clothing. Ryan provides them with his clothing, while simultaneously one of the investigators return to the crime scene, Detective Wardensky. This detective knocks on many of Ryan's neighbors' doors to ask if they may have witnessed anything that can help investigators put this case together. On about the third door, he finds a witness with an interesting story. Apparently, earlier that evening while both Ryans were home, this neighbor could hear screaming and yelling coming from Ryan's apartment. They could hear smashing and what sounded like possibly a fight that had gotten physical. This neighbor heard one male voice yelling, You stabbed me in the chest! And the other male voice yelling back, You stabbed me in the chest first! 
with the fork. Due to the injuries matching the witness statements, Detective Wardensky now felt he established probable cause and decided to contact the county attorney, hoping to now bring charges against Ryan. He then tells this to Ryan, hoping that the pressure may help elicit a confession. Here's where we're at with this. I just talked with the county attorney's office, and based on the information I have, uh, we're going to be charging you with deliberate homicide. Oh my God. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Whoa. 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 No way. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So I, I'm asking you, I'm begging you here, please explain to me what happened so I have a clear picture, you know, of, of what took place, you know, I mean, otherwise I got to go based on the facts that I have. Understood. You won't be up. I poked him too hard, I think he his head or I poked him in the back of your head, I'm not sure. So how did the blood get out by the front door? How did that happen? He, he got up, like looking for me. Okay. Well, so he didn't leave him. I didn't leave him in the shower. I didn't leave him anywhere near the bathroom. Like I, I was right there by the clothes, and it was just like it was so much blood. And then he started like getting really like on the back of his head, right there. I thought he had like banged his head, or maybe I poked him in the neck or something. Probably not like tricking me to get some information. Like, I really, this is such no. like an accident. It's gone like so bad. Okay. Oh my god. <laughs> my mama. After being questioned for roughly 11 hours, Ryan Lamb is officially arrested and charged with the deliberate homicide of 31 year old Ryan Nixon. When the autopsy was completed, Ryan Lamb's story appeared to fall apart. There were many injuries that clearly contradicted his claims. They found Ryan to have a broken rib and a fractured sternum, as well as severe internal bleeding caused by the stab wounds, as well as by severe blunt force trauma. A year later, on June 4th, 2019, Ryan Lamb's trial began, and Ryan pled not guilty. He also completely changes his story again. Ryan now states that when he arrived home, an altercation between him and his boyfriend began fairly quickly. It continued to escalate until apparently Ryan Nixon pulled out a fork and began stabbing him. This is when Ryan Lamb felt he needed to defend himself. So he quickly grabbed the pair of scissors and began swinging back as a form of defense. The prosecution was very quickly able to shut down this attempt at a self-defense defense by demonstrating Ryan's lack of urgency that evening. After the injuries were inflicted, Ryan claimed that neither of the two had a functioning phone for him to call 911 with. So because of this, Ryan actually walked over half a mile to the nearest gas station before then placing the frantic call. Ryan was friendly enough with most of his neighbors that asking them to borrow their phone to call 911 would have proved a lot more urgency. Also, the full details regarding the condition of any of the phones at Ryan's residence has never really been released. However, the emergency feature on most phones allow for an emergency call to be placed regardless of whether or not it is currently active on a paid phone plan or not. Despite these damning details, the jury was only one vote away from acquitting Ryan, simply due to a lingering question of whether or not the charges should be for negligent homicide as opposed to deliberate homicide. This result caused the judge to declare a mistrial. County courts are working to determine how to move forward after a recent murder trial has ended in a mistrial. Ryan Lamb was charged with deliberate homicide in the death of his partner. Lamb admitted to stabbing him with scissors during sex, but he claims it was self-defense. After two days of deliberating last week, the jury was in a deadlock, and the court will reconvene on July 11th to decide how to proceed. The date for the second trial was pending, but before a date could be set, prosecutors speak to Ryan again this time with a plea agreement up their sleeve. Ryan agrees to make an Alford plea in exchange for having his charges reduced to negligent homicide. It is believed that Ryan felt he would not be able to win the retrial, and so by accepting this plea, he was able to lower his prison sentence. And in 2020, Ryan Lamb was convicted of the negligent homicide of Ryan Nixon and was sentenced to 10 years behind bars. 
A whitefish man was sentenced to Montana State Prison for killing his partner during a sexual encounter. Flathead County District Court Judge Robert Allison sentenced Ryan Lamb to 10 years in prison. The sentence comes two months after Lamb entered a plea to negligent homicide in December. Kalispell police say Lamb stabbed his boyfriend, Ryan Nixon, with a pair of scissors during a sexual encounter in August of 2018. Lamb originally pleaded not guilty to felony charges of deliberate homicide. Ryan is scheduled to be released in the year 2030. Are you looking for more Stay Awake content? And I Stay Awake. And I miss Stay Awake. And now I wonder. Then why not take a look at the Stay Awake Patreon? Our Patreon is now home to seven Patreon-exclusive episodes and five episodes with extended intros. And this library will be always growing. You will also have early access to any future YouTube content. All of the videos on Patreon will remain online, so there is no need to worry about any potential removals. All of your patronage goes towards supporting the creation of future Stay Awake content. So take a gander if you'd so please. If not, well, that's okay too. For those of you who are already subscribed, Stay Awake thanks you immensely.